What's up guys, Jace Two Cents here, and it's been years since I've done a how to build a computer guide. I don't know, maybe I've gotten a little bit too complacent and I forget that there are new PC builders every single day. So today I'm talking to the beginner who's already chosen their parts and they're sitting there scratching their head going, how the heck do I put this all together? Now also a huge thank you to ASUS for sponsoring today's video as well as sending out some really cool stuff for us to include in this how-to guide. I'm not gonna call it a build guide because I'm not telling you what parts to use. Uh, this isn't, part lists are always changing. So I, wanna, I want something that's gonna last for a while and will be applicable for a long time. And with Ryzen being out, this is the perfect time to do it. Now they sent over their ROG motherboard here. This is the Crosshair 6 Hero from obviously ASUS, a Republic of Gamers motherboard. We've got an AMD Ryzen 1700X, a pretty decent CPU that doesn't break the bank, but still gives you some pretty good overclock ability. We've got the ROG Strix GTX 1070. Uh, it's an NVIDIA graphics card, of course. Pretty good sweet spot GPU again, in my opinion. And we've got a couple of peripherals here to take a look at. We've got the Gladius 2 mouse, the successor to their popular Gladius mouse we took a look at a while back, and their new ROG Claymore. It's an RGB mechanical gaming keyboard. So with that said, here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna build it. I'm gonna build this. I'm gonna tell you what I'm doing as I do it, and hopefully I won't leave out anything really important. But I think, uh, I think we can do this. I think, I think I can build this. Let's see. When it comes to building a basic PC, I like to have pretty basic tool set. I use a multi-bit right here, which has got different size Phillips and uh, flathead screwdrivers, zip ties to keep our cables nice and tidy, and some side cutters for cutting our zip ties. Now for this build today, we're gonna also need a USB thumb drive because we are gonna be updating the BIOS on our Ryzen motherboard, which is something I recommend. If you're building a Ryzen CPU-based computer, then definitely get the latest BIOS from your motherboard manufacturer and include that as part of your installation. So what we're gonna do now is we are gonna go ahead and bench test this. We wanna make sure all of the components work before we get them inside the computer because that's the worst time to find out something is not working right. So to do that, obviously we need our motherboard right here. We need our power supply. We need our CPU, graphics card, our cooler, and in this case, I'm using the Celsius S36 from Fractal Design, just launched. And we need a monitor, of course, to be able to see if we're actually posting. Now, AMD-based CPUs have the pins located on the CPU itself, whereas Intel-based systems have the pins located on the motherboard. So you're gonna definitely wanna handle the CPU with care, but you wanna take note that on the corner of the CPU is a gold triangle. Now that gold triangle is going to align with a triangle that's located on the socket itself. So open up the retention arm, align the gold triangle on the CPU with the triangle on the socket, and push down the arm. Now for our memory, you're gonna open up the retention tabs here on the motherboard for your RAM sticks. Now as you can see, we've got four RAM slots, but we only have two sticks of RAM. So we're gonna be using two of the slots on here. Now, if you're using a different motherboard, you wanna consult your manual to determine which slots are appropriate for how many DIMMs you're using. Now in this case, we're gonna use both of the gray slots. You're gonna align the slot on the DIMM with the slot on the motherboard, slide it into place, and you're gonna push down firmly until you hear a click. And you're gonna do that for both of your RAM sticks. So I decide to do things a little bit difficult sometimes. And because I'm just such a stickler for water cooling, I'm using an all-in-one water cooling loop. Now, if you were using an air cooler, at this point, you would install your air cooler on the motherboard and you would just leave it. You could install it in the case with your cooler already installed. But I can't do that with an all-in-one water cooling loop, at least not as easy. So we're gonna be doing a temporary installation of the pump to the motherboard. For the sake of just doing a post, I don't actually have to install the fans on the radiator. There's enough passive cooling on this to allow me to turn on the system and make sure that it's all working without any threat of overheating the system. So we're gonna go ahead and start by removing the screws that are on the AM bra AM4 bracket right here. And this particular cooler will be reusing the back plate that is on this. So with the amount of different types of coolers there are on the market, I can't possibly include all of those in this video. So it's very important that you consult the manual for whatever cooler you are using. But the nice thing about the uh, Celsius is it does include brackets for Ryzen right out of the box. So that's a plus. So we're gonna start by installing this guy right into place, just like so. And we're gonna do that for all four posts. These are the standoffs that allow our pump to have something to screw down to. But as you can see, like I said, here's our four posts and they retain the factory 
uh, back plate. So you want to apply about a pea-sized drop of thermal paste right in the middle of the CPU. My pea's a little fatter than most. And we also need to remove the bracket that comes with the cooler that's pre-installed for uh, Intel. I'm gonna take the AMD bracket, pre-apply it to the pump, and then we are gonna take our pump and put it into place. Once it's in place, just take your four thumb screws, install them using the alternating corner method, very similar to putting a wheel on a car, but don't tighten anything down just yet. We want all four applied to where there's just a little bit of resistance. And once that's done, we can take our screwdriver and just give them one little ugga dugga, if you will. So it's just slightly snug. You don't want to over tighten this. The threads won't let it go any farther than it needs to. Take our pump wire and plug it in to the pump header or the CPU header on the motherboard. This one actually has an AIO pump header, so we're gonna be plugging it into there. Next, we're gonna take our super sexy GTX 1070 Strix graphics card. We're gonna make sure the PCI Express retention clip is open. Usually they come closed, push that open. And we are going to also make sure the motherboard is aligned on the edge of the box so that the retaining tabs on the bottom of the card can hang off of the edge. Align it with the socket and then push down until you hear a satisfying click. Or in this case, I have to push it up. There we go. So now it's fully in place. It's gonna be a little bit wobbly. So you wanna be careful with it because we don't have anything supporting it on this side, but we wanna make sure that it boots up and that everything is good. Now, depending on which power supply you're using with your build, you may or may not have modular cables. Now the G3, which I'm using here from EVGA, does indeed have a full modular cable set. So I had to locate the 24 pin for the motherboard, the EPS power for the CPU, one PCI Express power for the GPU. This card only has one eight pin power slot, so we only need one cable. And then we need the power cable to plug the PSU into power. Most modular power supplies are gonna have the cables labeled. So we see we have an MB here, which stands for motherboard, and those are gonna plug into the ports on the back of the power supply that are labeled the same. So we're gonna do that for all of our cables, including our CPU, PCI Express, and our, well, that's it in this case. We only have those three things we have to power right now. Now I like to hang on to all the twist ties that come off of the cable sets, because at the end of the day, they're very useful for cable management, especially if you don't have enough zip ties or any zip ties at all. So take your 24 pin cable, give it a little bit of a bend, that way it's not putting too much stress on the socket, and you're gonna align this little retention clip with the retention tab on the 24 pin on the motherboard. It's only gonna fit one way, because it is keyed. It's got all these different shapes. You can see they're, they're squares and different hexagons or whatever the shape is. They're only gonna fit one way. So once you get it lined up, it might take a little bit of force, especially when it's new, but go until you hear a click and then it's in place. Next, we're gonna take our CPU EPS power. Uh, and some other boards only require a four pin, some require an eight pin, so that's why this is split. Just push them together. Same thing, take those retention tabs, line them up right here with the notch and push those into place. Finally, take your PCI Express power cable. You notice it's got a little pigtail here. Some graphics cards only need a six pin, some need an eight pin. So it's kind of a universal, if you will. So in this case, we're gonna push them together, making sure that the little retention tabs on there are firmly in place. These guys right here in the back. Line it up with the tab on our graphics card, and just like before, push it into place. If your power supply on the back has a power toggle, make sure it's in the off position plug in your power cable, and then plug this into a power source. Take your HDMI cable that's plugged into your monitor, plug it into your graphics card. Make sure your monitor is turned on. We got a light there, so we are turned on. All right, here comes the moment of truth, the part where you find out if all your parts work. We're gonna start by flipping the power switch on the back of the PSU, and we're gonna look for any lights on the motherboard. Now we are getting a green light up here on the motherboard, so that's good, the motherboard's getting power. Now, not all motherboards have a start button like this one does. Most motherboards do have surface mounted buttons now for reset and power. Uh, so I could push this start button to start it. But if yours doesn't, you could actually take a screwdriver and locate on the motherboard or use the manual if it's not properly labeled and find the pins that are labeled power button. And you could actually bridge those two together to turn on the system like I just did. Now, normally I would just push the start button, but I wanted to show you that you could indeed do that. Now the thing with, with AMD you want to keep in mind is the first post can sometimes take a while, like nerve-wrackingly, finger-biting. I'm telling you, it can take a while sometimes. It really makes you wonder if things are working. 
So we're going to wait. And we're going to wait. Oh, there we go. We got a blue light. There it is. Now what happened there is it actually went through the post cycle three times. What it does is it kind of like checks everything and then it reboots and then checks everything again. And the way, the reason why I know that is over here, at least on this particular motherboard, we have this Q code readout and that tells us what's happening with the post. We also have a series of LEDs right here that will go from green to yellow to white. And when it turns white, that means we have a good post. So that's why I was like, oh, we're good because it actually turned into a white LED before the monitor ever came on. So the cool thing is it's telling us we got a new CPU installed. Please enter setup to configure your system. We don't actually have a keyboard and mouse hooked up to this. So now that we confirm that everything is working, we're going to undo pretty much everything that we just did. Yeah, but that's okay. Trust me, taking it apart now is a lot easier than if we had everything in the computer and then figured out that something wasn't working right. Now there's some parts that you can actually leave plugged in here. So we're going to go ahead and leave the memory plugged in. If you had an air cooler, you could leave that on here, but because I'm using an all-in-one cooler and I don't feel like trying to install this and finagle this all around to, you know, where it's not in my way, I'm going to go ahead and remove the all-in-one water cooling loop as well. And we don't actually have to undo all of it, actually. We just need to undo the retaining tabs and remove the pump and the wire itself. We're going to also have to clean off this thermal compound. So I'm just using a paper towel here. Most people use coffee filter, something that's non-fibrous, and some isopropyl alcohol and we are going to go ahead and just sort of let that eat away at the thermal paste. And we're gonna get as much of that off as possible. We wanna do the same thing to the pump surface. We don't want any thermal compound on there whatsoever, so. Okay, case prep. This is the part where we need to get our case ready to receive our parts. Now there's no way I can tell you how to get your case ready because I don't know what parts you're using, I don't know what case you're using, but I'm using the Cooler Master Master Case Maker 6. It's one of their newer cases from the Maker line, and it is a full ATX supported uh, case. That means it can support a full size ATX motherboard, which, which is what we have right here. But this will also fit ITX and micro ATX. So as long as you know that your motherboard will fit in your case, then you're good to go. Now I also know I'm using a 360 millimeter uh, radiator in this. That's not going to fit in the top of this case. So I'm gonna to have to mount it to the front, which means I'm actually gonna to have to remove this little cover here, take off the side panel and show you the insides where we are going to get this case ready to receive the parts that I've obviously chosen. I'm gonna be using one hard drive here for demonstration purposes. This is actually a Western Digital Red. It's a NAS drive, not necessarily a desktop drive but it will work for today. And I'm using a Patriot Ignite 960 gigabyte SSD. So I know that this can actually mount right here if I want it to on the, we'll call it the floorboard of the case, or I can actually move these brackets to the back of the motherboard tray if I want to. I also know that I only need to support one hard drive. So I don't need three here, two there. So I'm gonna use the manual to determine how I can outfit this to fit my hard drive, my SSD, as well as my 360 millimeter radiator. So after looking at the manual and looking at the parts that I have that I need to install, this is what I came up with. And we'll start at the bottom here. I moved the hard drive cage back 
uh, one slot. Now it can go back two slots if we want it to, but I had to make some room here for the 360 red, which I will be front mounting. Now that's not gonna cause us a problem with overheating components inside the system. In fact, I did a video on that. You guys can go and check out on how much the front mounted radiator actually affects the rest of the system. But we've got so much airflow in this case, it's not gonna be a problem. The reason why I didn't mount it to the top is as you can see here, we only can fit either two 140s or two 120s. We couldn't fit a 360. So what I did was I took the fans from the front of the case and moved them to the top since this case didn't come with any exhaust fans on the top. It only had one on the back. So we put those up here as an exhaust. We also have a 140 exhaust right here in the back. So now we can fit our 360 in the front also by installing the bracket that comes with this uh, so that we could actually you know, mount a 360 up front. Also too, instead of putting the SSD right here on the on show, it, it shows right there, which would be kind of neat, but it would split up our wiring. So I just installed it right here above our hard drive. That way our SATA power and our SATA cables go the same route to keep things nice and tidy. Could have also mounted it on the back of the motherboard tray, but at least having it right there puts it in the path of airflow. So if you're doing a lot of read writes to your SSD, it keeps the temperature. And same thing with your hard drive, uh, fairly low. The other thing I did was I installed our motherboard standoffs based on an ATX layout, because again, it is an ATX motherboard. So the next thing we need to do here is we need to get our motherboard installed. But before we go just throwing it in there, you need to take out your IO shield. That's the piece of metal that goes in the back of the case uh, that sort of acts as a, a shroud for all of our USB plugs and other things that go onto the motherboard. So here it is right here. We'll get this guy out of the way. And usually these get installed with the circles at the bottom. This is all of your audio. You can see right here by looking at the back of the motherboard, it's gonna go just like this. So you're gonna snap this guy right into the back of your case right here. Next, you wanna lay your case flat on its back. You wanna make sure that any cables are out of the way, just like this fan cable here. We'll just kinda of move that guy up and out of there because we don't wanna pinch that between the floor of the case and the motherboard. That can cause a short, not to mention we need that cable, so we need some slack. So everything's out of the way. We're just gonna take our motherboard, we're gonna line up the audio jacks with the holes in the IO shield in the back. And we are going to gently push it into place. Two of the standoffs in this case have nubs on them which will hold the motherboard in place so that we can get them all screwed down. So you're gonna screw in one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine screws in this motherboard. What I like to do once I have the motherboard in is connect the front panel connectors. You know, that's for your front side USB, your power button, your power switch, your hard drive, blinking light, all that stuff. And I like to do it now because if we just get it out of the way now, we don't have a graphics card in here and all kinds of stuff in our way, it's a lot easier. So I'm gonna start by pushing the USB three right through the bottom grommet right here because we have more clearance this way. Fortunately, this case gives us a lot of options for routing things, much neater options. So there's our front side USB 3.0. And right here, these pins on the very bottom right corner, that's where you would plug in all of these little guys right there. Now this can get pretty annoying trying to wrangle up all these little wires and try and, you know, if you've got fat fingers like I do to try and get them all in there. And so fortunately, Asus includes this guy right here and it's black and not white like some of them are, which really will stand out. And in a black theme, this is perfect. This is nothing more than a header that you plug all those pieces into here. It's a lot easier to work on outside of the case. And then you plug that in on the motherboard. You can see we have one header right there, which is blocked off, which means this only can go in one way. And that's gonna line up on the top right corner right there. So to plug that in and there we go. Unfortunately, most of that won't be seen once we have everything in there, our graphics card and PCI Express cables and stuff. So it's a lot easier to work on like that than trying to get it all on the motherboard. All right, so next up, I'm gonna install my all-in-one water cooling loop here in the front of the case. Like I said earlier, I'm not concerned about hot air heating up this case. We got way more than enough airflow for this, but once this is in the front, I'm then gonna have the fans on this side pushing air through the radiator. Just kind of doing a little test fit here to make sure everything lines up good. And it definitely appears to be. So yeah, I guess all we gotta do is the fans and the rad install. One thing to keep in mind though, when you're using AIO coolers, especially when they're mounted to the front, is you don't want the tubes to accidentally push up into the fans that are gonna be exhausting air. So if I install this this way, you can see that we get the tubes that push up towards the top. 
So I would always give the fans a little bit of a spin just to see if they're gonna interfere. Now they're not, so that's the way that I'm gonna go ahead and mount it down, just like that. Because I also don't want them going the opposite direction and making contact with the graphics card. So there we are plugged into our AIO pump header and uh, the pump is now installed. Now the last fan we have to plug in is the rear exhaust fan. Fortunately, the Crosshair 6 Hero has a chassis fan header right here on the motherboard nearest to that fan. So all we gotta do is plug this in and then we can just kind of get this cable sort of up and out of the way. I like to just sort of tuck them between the fan and the little cover right there. There. It's just sort of out of the way, it looks a lot neater. And there you go. Now it's time for everyone's favorite part, the installation of the graphics card. Let's face it, we love our computers, but it's the graphics card that really gets us excited. Now to prepare for the graphics card installation, make sure the little tab on the PCI Express slot you're gonna be using is pushed down, and you remove the two I.O. covers on the back that line up with the PCI Express slot you're gonna be using. Take your graphics card, remove the covers for the display ports, and make sure the cover is taken off right here where the pins are. Go in at a slight angle, and you're gonna be inserting these two tabs into the metal slot right there, just like this, and line it up with the socket and push it until you get a click. Now we have to take our two retaining screws that we took off for the covers, tighten those up on the graphics card, and then that bad boy is in place. All we have left to do now is install our power supply and do some cable management. Now this particular case has a bracket on the back that you remove to attach your power supply to. Makes it a lot easier that way and a little bit more space to be able to push the power supply in. Now we still have all of our cables installed earlier from when we did our test. The only additional power cable we have to plug in because our fans are getting power through the pump, so we're good there. Our other fans on our chassis are getting power from the motherboard we just need to power the two uh, hard drives we have, the SS SSD and the hard drive, and as well as some integrated case lighting that exists in this case, which is one SATA plug right here. So all I did was take one additional modular cable out of the set, which is perfect, because we've got three SATA plugs there, two of them are going right on top of each other, and the third one is in the same region. So that's one of the reasons why I don't separate out hard drives and SSDs if I don't have to, because having one cable installed definitely makes things a lot tidier. We've also got all the built-in cable management right here on the back of this case that's taking care of all of the front panel connectors. So you can see cable management on this is gonna look pretty darn good. So what we need to do right now though, is we're gonna orient, in this particular case, the fan down. We've got a lot of space right here. We've got some dust filter. So we're not gonna be too worried about, so we got a dust filter right there. So we're not too worried about dust in this particular case, even if it was on carpet. Now, if your case doesn't have one of these brackets, what I'm doing here, you would just do with the power supply already installed on your case. A lot of cases are actually moving to this type of, of mechanism now. So there's our bracket nice and installed, but before we go pushing it inside the case, we're gonna go ahead and plug in our SATA cable that goes right here where it says SATA. You've got SATA and peripheral on this particular power supply because the peripheral is different for the, the Molex plugs. So we're just gonna plug that into SATA 1, and this is all the power cables we're gonna need. Now there's one other cable in here that we haven't installed yet moving forward, and that is our front panel HD audio port. That's what's gonna allow you to be able to use the front side headphone jacks on your case. Those are always located on the bottom left of the motherboard. And this is something I, you know, admittedly should have done earlier when the power supply wasn't in there, but I forgot it, and you can see now do as I say, not as I do, because now you're getting to see firsthand why I like to do this. See, that's the plug we're trying to get into right there. It's dark, it's dreary, it's all by itself. I don't even personally recommend using front side audio if you can avoid it, but you might as well if you have the option. All right, there we go. That's installed, and there was a good example as to why I like to do all that before the graphics card is in there. So what we're gonna do now is with the fan orienting down, we're gonna force all of our cables through the hole. We're gonna kind of pull it out through the backside, just like that. And we've got our captive screws that are on the bracket and that's what we're gonna use right there to tighten down our power supply. But there's no reason to do that yet. We can kind of leave that loose because next we have to plug everything in and manage our cables. Now most case companies now are including these built-in cable management channels and Velcro straps. 
I'm telling you that's a huge lifesaver compared to what we used to have to deal with back in the day, especially when they were just flat panels. So undo all of these and just kind of start taking a look at where things are. So I'm going to go, oh, that's the grommet I'm going to use where my 24 pin is. So we're just going to push that guy through there. So I'm not going to connect it yet. I'm just kind of putting everything in place on where it needs to go. This is my uh, VGA or my PCI Express power. We'll talk about that one in a second. This is my CPU power. And we're going to push this one up through this hole back there because we know that's where the power plug is for the CPU. And then we have here our SATA. And I'll go ahead and plug in our SATA power now because it's easy to access. It's right here. When you plug in the SATA power, you're going to see there's a little notch on one side. Just line that up with the notch on the power supply side and click it in. Be careful. Any sort of lateral movement on that will snap that right off. I'm telling you, every, anyone who's ever built a system long enough or built enough systems has probably dealt with that being snapped off. I'm going to now plug in this guy onto my hard drive right there. And then I'm going to plug this little guy, the pigtail end, into my SSD. Then we can just kind of take that, push that sort of out of the way. And look at that. Look at that. Nice and neat. Now, power for our graphics card here. Fortunately, we've got these pass-through grommets built in right here for uh, our mid-plate. So we can run the cables directly up through that. So it's a lot nicer and neater looking to come up through the mid-plate if we have the opportunity to, then to come in through the backside here or around this gap, because then it just gets a little bit more difficult. The more turns you have in the cable, the less tidy things are gonna look. Plug that in, we'll give a little bend right there. And there, as you can see now, it just goes right through the floor and that looks a whole lot better. So while we're here, we might as well go ahead and plug in our power for our motherboard, our 24 pin. There we go. That's nice and neat and out of the way. And I think that's all the cables we have that need to come through that side. So now we can go ahead and move around to the back and we can tidy up these cables here for cable management. So we'll push that guy out of the way. That's the PCI Express. And then we can go ahead and just kind of push all this back through. Now we've got to plug in the SATA cables for our storage drives. And we get four of these included with the Crosshair 6. Uh, but if you look at these, Two of them have a, a 90 bend and a 180 bend, or technically a straight piece, and two of them have straight SATAs like that. So we're not gonna use the one with the bends because we don't need them. We only have two drives. So we're gonna go ahead and click these in place. Again, just like the power cable, you're gonna line up the little tab. Normally the little metal push part will go on top. So we're just gonna click that in. And then we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing on the bottom. You hear that little satisfying click? And we're going to just route them through right here because that's the grommet we need to plug them into our motherboard. Now using your user's manual, determine which SATA ports are appropriate to plug into uh, for your particular type of hard drives. So we can just plug that in like that, stack those two on top of each other so they're nice and neat. We're going to go ahead and plug in our CPU power pins once again right here on the motherboard. Push the slack up through. And now we can push our power supply all the way forward and tighten down the captive thumb screws. Now what we're gonna do here is we're just gonna take a small zip tie. And we're gonna kinda zip all these guys together. We're gonna make them best friends for life, or besties. They go to each other's houses on Thanksgiving. It's not weird. Take our side snips and cut those back. And then we don't really need to zip tie this guy down right here. I mean, we could have, we have these loops here if you really cared that you could have tightened it down like that and just made it look all super anal retentive. But I'm actually okay with this. So what we have to do next? Let's see if it works. Do you think it's gonna work? Yep. You do? Why? Because yeah. we post-tested. Yeah, it's true. See, he's learning. We know it's gonna work because we did a post-test. As long as we didn't pinch any wires. So for the Crosshair board, we're gonna to navigate to the ASUS website. I went to the product page for the Crosshair 6 Hero. I'm gonna to go to the support. Driver and tools. I need to tell what OS I have, although it doesn't really matter because we're gonna be doing this at the BIOS level anyway, uh, or the UEFI anyway. Click on BIOS and then find whatever the newest one is. Look at the date. So this one's only about a week old. So we're gonna use this one right here. This is BIOS 1107. If you're watching this in the future, that might have been updated by then. It might even be updated by the time this video makes it live. Anyway, you're gonna download it and you're gonna export it 
onto some sort of a flash drive. So you're gonna download the archive to the flash drive and you're gonna extract it to the root of the flash drive. What that means is it's not gonna be in any folder system, it's just you want the cap file right here to be on the main root of the drive. Now it's time to turn it on. I took the USB drive, plugged it into the front USB right there because we are gonna flash the BIOS. Make sure the power is turned on on your power supply and then push your power button on your case to make sure that it actually works. There we go. That's some pretty, pretty lights there. Now it's, again, just like before, it's not gonna take nearly as long to boot up. Okay, so you're gonna hit delete multiple times once the monitor starts to turn on so we can get into our BIOS. And once we're in our BIOS, we're gonna navigate over to the tool tab and we're gonna go down to the easy flash utility. Again, if you're not using this motherboard, you can have to look at the manual to figure out how to do it for yours. If we were connected to the internet, we could grab it from the internet, but it's safer to do it from a local storage if you can. So we're gonna do this now using storage utility. We're gonna navigate over to the file. This is the one we downloaded right here, the 1107. And we're gonna read that file, yes. This is the really important part. When this is happening, do not cut power to your system under any circumstances. That will lead to a very bad situation, potentially a bricked motherboard. Now this will usually take about a minute or two at the most. Uh, it will do a series of restarts. Let it do its thing until it's completely done. And once it is, you'll be running on the latest BIOS. So here we are in the BIOS and you can see it took effect. It's at 1107X64. So our new BIOS has taken place. So what we've done so far effectively is we tested our parts, we built it, and now we updated our BIOS. We have the latest compatibility with Ryzen, but now we need an operating system. Without an operating system, it's completely useless. So that's up to you to decide what you're gonna use. But for the sake of today's video, we're gonna actually be using Windows 10, mostly because it's installable off of a USB drive and obviously we didn't install any sort of optical in here. So what we're gonna do now is we're gonna remove our USB drive that we had the BIOS on, and we're gonna take the Windows 10 key or drive, and we're gonna plug that in to one of our USB 3 ports on the back of the system, and then we are going to just start it once again. It should automatically recognize that it is a bootable ISO or image of a Windows installation CD. So all they've basically done is taken the CD, put it on a USB drive, and we're gonna boot from that now and do our installation. Now there's really no reason to do a 32-bit installation, so always choose 64 where applicable. And from here forward, basically it's nothing more than just answering the questions on the screen. Once you're done, you'll land at the desktop where you then are gonna to wanna to go ahead and install all of your drivers that come with your software. You can install those again if you don't have an optical drive by just going to the manufacturer's website on another computer like we did for the BIOS, downloading the drivers and installing them that way. Anyway guys, I hope this build guide has helped. Anyway guys, I hope this. You hear that stutter? I stutter it a lot. Yeah, my Kaisen going on. I got stung by a bee in my lip. Now most of the time Windows is able to install basic drivers like LAN drivers, wireless drivers, and whatever may be present on your motherboard. But in case it doesn't, you can actually install the drivers via USB the same way we did by setting up the drive with our BIOS. Just go over to the manufacturer's website, take a USB drive on another computer, install things like your LAN drivers and your chipset drivers onto the USB drive, and then just install them that way using their own installers and set up software. But that's it, it's really easy. It's not hard to build your own computer, especially Ryzen. I actually find Ryzen systems or AMD based systems as, a, as general to be easier than Intel because they're a lot less fragile when it comes to the pins on the motherboard. But by now you guys are ready to start playing your games and enjoying your new computer and looking at it and going, you know what? I built that and I'm proud of it. Thanks for watching guys. Again, a huge thank you to ASUS for sponsoring this video. Without them, this would not have been possible. So make sure you guys go to the links in the description of this video and you guys will find links to the new Claymore keyboard, the Gladius 2 mouse, the 1070 and their whole lineup of graphics cards as well as their motherboards available for Ryzen and Intel based systems. So they've got you covered on any type of computer you're trying to build. But that guys, it's time to go. Thanks for watching. Hopefully I've helped you build your first computer. And as always, I will see you in the next one.